Yeah, I'm a raw waller, huh? Hat to the back like I'm TJ Dead Waller, huh? Built me an empire, huh? Ballin' they call it, I feel like an empire, huh? Jump in the Audi, push start, huh? Off way. Hey, what's up, guys? Back again with another video on the Java FX series. This episode, I'll be teaching you how to use controllers. So I explained this a little bit last episode, but a controller is a class that allows you to control the events and actions for a um, FXML file or for a front end of a JavaFX application. So um, yeah, so let's go ahead and like get started so I can show you how it works in detail. So I have a simple uh, you know, little project here with nothing except for the stage title and then the scene and blah, blah, blah. So we need to create our own. Uh, we're gonna create a, a package here called resources. And this will be the package for our FXML files. Um, we need to make a new FXML file. So we'll do FXML file. And we'll call this one um, home.fxml, or just home. Oop, nope, that's not right. Cancel, open this up. Let's rename it to home. I spelled home wrong, it looks like. So home, there we go. So now we get this here. And automatically it's going to have this here for you. It wants you to change it to whatever the correct controller is. And so, yeah, as you create a FXML file within IntelliJ, it's going to automatically ask you what class you want to set to be this controller, okay? So we can um, set it to whatever we want to. It's going to automatically assume we set it to resources.hom, but that's not correct. So we can change this to whatever we want. And um, so let's say we want to set a controller. What we need to do here is create a new package. Or we don't have to, but just for structure, we're going to create a new package, and we're going to call this controllers. All right, so we have controllers and then resources. And then resources holds all the FXML and the controller is gonna hold all the controllers, right? So we're gonna call this, we're gonna make a new Java class here. And this is gonna be our first controller. We're gonna call it home controller. And we're calling it home controller because it's the controller for the home FXML file, right? So that makes a little bit of sense. Stop asking me this, you're so annoying. Anyway, so we have a controller here. It's pretty much empty, but that's all we need for now. So we can go back to here to the FXML file and set it to whatever the location is for the controller class. So we could do controllers dot home controller, and then it automatically knows where to find it now. So we have successfully set the controller for this anchor anchor pane that we have here. Okay. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it for that. We need to load the controller. We need to load the FXML file into our main class here now. So we could do. Uh, Parents, oops, we'll call it parents, uh, home, lo home roots, and then we can do fxml loader dot uh, load, and then we do git class dot git resource, and then we specify the location for the fxml file. So resources uh, slash fxml, just like that. Okay, that should be all we have to do. So now we can create a scene for this that we, uh, thing that we just loaded here. So scene. We'll call it home scene, or just call it home, that's fine, is equal to new scene. And then we now just, all we got to do is put the root right there. So now we just created a new scene, so we can set that scene to the default scene to run. So let's run this now and see if it works. And we can see if we set the FXML file correctly, but it looks like we have a problem here. Uh, let's see, Java 13, FXML loader dot load. Oh, we put slash fxml. We're supposed to put home dot fxml. There we go. Just a slight error there. Um, so let's let that run. Hopefully it works this time. And boom, so now we get our little application here. It's empty currently because we haven't added anything as a child node to the anchor pane. So let's go ahead and open this up and actually uh, edit the file so we can add some stuff to it to make sure it works. So we open this up in scene builder and let's add some stuff to the anchor pane just to test it, like I said. So we'll go to controls. Let's add a simple uh, radio button, whatever, just a simple button here. And now we can do control S. And now we can go back here and see that the changes were automatically made for us. So we can go ahead and run this uh, shift or no alt F10 to run this or no shift F10 to run this. Stop and rerun. There we go. So now it's going to run for us. This is annoying. Let's get this scaled down. So there you go, we have our application here and we were able to add a radio button to it. That's perfect. But now that we have a controller set successfully, as you can see, the controller is set right here still. So now that we have a controller, let me show you how to use the controller, right? Because we have, this, we have the controller set, but it's still empty, so it's not really doing anything for us currently, okay? So the main um, use of the controller, like I said, is to have all the events for our home.fxml file, basically. So anything related to that will go into here. So let's say we need to add an event to this radio button 
or this anchor pane. So whenever we uh, whenever we click on this anchor pane, it's going to trigger an event, right? So we want this event to appear inside of here, and we can code this ourselves by typing it out, you know, like on click event or something like that, and then linking it into the FXML file. But let me show you how to do it automatically with Scene Builder because Scene Builder is really awesome for that. So we, all we got to do is click the node that we want to set a, um, a event for. So click Anchor Pane. And now we just get rid of this and go to the Code uh, tab here. And all of these methods here, or all of these events here, are all the different um, events that you can use with the controller, right? So it's pretty cool. So we have on drag select uh, detected. We have um, on key press. So let's try and find the click events. So um, on mouse clicks okay so that's pretty cool that's exactly what we need so somehow we need to make an event for this that will um, trigger whenever the mouse is clicked so we can specify the name here and so the hashtag means it's a method so we just need to specify the name of a method that we want to set for this right so let's say um, let's do on click events okay you know it's pretty pretty standard right so we'll do control s now to save that and now if you go back here it should save and now we see inside of our anchor pane we see on mouse click is equal to and then it has the method name so on click event so currently it's red because that method does not exist in the home controller class here so we can add it ourselves by typing it out or we can hover over this and we could do create method on click event and it'll do it automatically for us right so that's really cool perfect and now inside of here is the code that's going to be run whenever we click on it right so it's all really automatic for us it's really simple and it does all the hard work for us right it's really cool so now let's do um the the anchor pane was just clicked, right? So we could just test and see if it works. So open this up, get rid of that space, and now let's run this to see if it works. So if this works correctly, it should print out the anchor pane was clicked every time we click into the, the uh, anchor pane, right? So let's open this up so we can see the console. So now watch the console and watch how I click. And boom, as I click, it, sh it shows up the anchor pane was clicked, okay? So that's awesome, right? That's exactly what we wanted it to do, but let's go over this one more time to see how I did it. So we have a on mouse clicked event here within the scene builder, and it wants us to provide a name for the method that is going to serve for that event. Okay. So then when you're done putting in the name of the method, it'll add it to the FXML file for you. When you save the scene builder file, it'll add it for you. And then now you can simply go into here and make the event and all that fun stuff like we did. So it's really, really simple. Like I said, so let's test it out. Let's make one more, um, just to test it out. So let's say we want to add a, <clears throat> let's add, um, let's do on, on mouse drag, let's see, on mouse drag over, on drag detected, all right, whatever that means. So we'll do this one, uh, drag events, uh, control S to save that. Now we can go back here and it says, it should say on drag events somewhere. Um, Maybe we didn't save it correctly. Control S to save it. Oh, there it is. Okay, so now it's appearing. So now we can hover over this and create the method for it automatically. And um, we can specify what we want to happen, right? So let's just do another it's just a simple output statement. So we'll just do blah, 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 just to you know, get this done really quickly. So we'll do Shift F10 and see how this looks. And if we drag now, okay, nothing's happening. Oh, that's cool. So we have to click and then that's cool. Anyway, so that's how that works. That's how you create an event with the scene builder and then link it in with the FXML file and then have it in the controller. So yeah, it's a very simple concept. All you're doing is creating all of your events for your scene or for your FXML file inside of the controller that corresponds with it. And you link it together by, of course, going here and setting the FX controller thing. So let's say you want to change this controller like later on in your program, right? right? Let's say you move the file and you want to rename it or something like that, you can go into, you can either change it right here if you want to, you just, you know, rename it just like that, or you can go into scene builder and change it. So where would you find that? You might think if you just click anchor pane, you can go to code and find it somewhere here, but that's not how it works. If you go down here, you need to close the hierarchy tab, and now you can open up the controller tab, and now it says all the controller info. So it's saying the controller class, and now we just provide the controller class for the FXML file, right? So we can change this if you want to. Um, really cool. Blah, 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 just like that. So if we do control S now, we go back here and it changed to G, S, G, S, G, right? So that's how that works, very simple. So if you do control Z, it's gonna go back, of course. Control S to resave that. And um, yeah, that's how that works. So let's test it out again by making another FXML file just to get the practice down. So we'll go back here to our main and we're gonna make a new 
thing here. So we're gonna call it parent um, login root. So we're gonna make another login screen or whatever. Um, fxml loader dot load get class dot get resource resources slash and then the name of the fxml file. So we're gonna do a login dot fxml. <clears throat> So now we can make a scene for that. So login is equal to new scene, uh, login roots, just like that, okay? But we have not created the fxml file yet, so let's go into here and create it, obviously, right? So fxml file, we'll call it login, just like that, really cool. Okay, so now we have this here popping up. So let's say we get rid of this or it doesn't exist, right? How can we just create it automatically? Of course, we can just reopen this with scene builder. And all we gotta do here is, is actually delete this and make something new. Let's replace it with a border pane. So we set the border pane here. We could set the different uh, the different sections for the border pane if you want to by adding by adding some random stuff here. So we'll do let's put some random stuff in here. So we'll do menu bar uh, slider. Add the slider on the bottom here. Uh, text view up top. Um, toggle button right here on the left. Okay, so that's a bunch of stuff we just added. So now. Let's do control F to see how it works. And there we go, it added everything perfectly for us, but we still have not set the controller for the FXML file. So we need to do that. Actually, first we need to make a controller for it. So new Java class, and let's make a controller here. So we're gonna call it login controller because it's the login FXML scene or login scene, I mean. So yeah, now we can uh, set the location in here. So we'll go back here to login. So now we can set the controller class if we want to do it here instead of actually typing it in in the fxml file. So we do controllers, controllers dot, and then login controller. Okay. So if we said, if we spelled everything correctly, um, we saved it just now. We can go back here. We can see that it worked. So if we go down here, we can see that it now says controllers dot login controller. Really cool, right? So now we added the controller, so it should be linked. So let's make an event so we can test it out just to make sure it worked correctly, if we linked it and everything correctly. So we'll go to open up the hierarchy here and we're gonna go to, let's go to this text view right here. So text field, I think it's that one, maybe. It might be this one. Yeah, it's the top one. So let's go to the left one here. So we click the left one and then now let's go to code and we can see all the different uh, events we can use with this. Okay, so we'll do something like, um, on key typed. Okay, we'll try that one. So on key type, press enter, control S to save that. Now we go back here to login.fxml. And we see that it's red, of course, so we're gonna create the method for it. So now let's go ahead and output a key was typed into the box, okay? And then now let's run this to see if it works correctly. Um, hopefully it does. Uh, of course, we we still have the regular the original scene set, so we need to go back here and then change this from home to login, just like that. Okay, so now it's the correct scene, hopefully. Okay, so there we go. We got all of our random stuff here, and so now if we type something in here, it says a key was typed into the box. Pretty cool, very standard. So hopefully you got that down. Hopefully you understand how the events work with the scene builder and then the controller class and all that. So let me show you one more thing is how to use the ID. So if we go back here to, if we click any of the nodes here, we can click the border pane. And if we go to the code tab here, we can see that we have FX colon ID. And the ID is gonna be the name of our node basically. So um, if we go back to the controller class here to log in, we can see that we do not have a way to access uh, let's say we want to, for some reason, access um, one of these nodes here, right? Let me open this up. Let's say we want to access this uh, drop down menu, right? We can't access it because we have no object for it, right? Because we're instead of using objects and creating the nodes with code, we're creating all of our nodes with the fxml file, right? So how do we take our fxml file and then link it into the code so we can actually get an object representation of this node here or any of the nodes? So we can do that by, give, by giving it an ID. So we need to create a what is that called that's a drop down it looks like so let me make sure let's go back here login and that's a choice box is that a choice yeah that's a choice box not a drop down but whatever same thing so we go back here we can create a new choice box choice box and let's give it a name of poop so how do we set this equal to the node that we have right here right 
here for the choice box. How do we set that equal to the choice box? So we can actually use the object and then change it if we want to, right? So we can do that by going back here. We can know that the name is called poop, right? It's called poop, so that's gonna be our ID. So whatever the name of the object is, it's also gonna be the name of the ID. So if we go back here now, we can change the ID to poop. So poop, enter, control S to save. Now it should be linked together. So if we actually, we should probably set it to null just by default. And so now we can access poop inside of these events here. So we can do poop, and now we can mess around with the node by using the code like we usually do instead of having to use fxml. So if for some reason you want to alter a node without having to use fxml, you can put it in back in a object and then use it just like that by setting a fx ID with scene builder, okay? So just before we test this out, if we go back to login.fxml, we can see the, that the fx ID is set to poop, right? And we have a problem here, it says poop should be set public or annotated with fxml, okay? So yeah, we need to go back here and set this to public, okay? That's more proper, we need to do that. So now if we go back here, the it's not red anymore, okay? So we set the ID, so that's just gonna correspond with the object name that we wanna set that to for the combo box, okay? So now we can access these, I mean choice box. So now we can access this choice box and uh, do whatever we want with it, right? So let's try doing something pretty cool, okay? So let's do it whenever we press the key, it's gonna rotate this somehow, okay? Or affect it, right? Because we wanna test and see if this is actually um, linked to this, right? So let's make it so that whenever we click it, the event is triggered and then the event is going to somehow manipulate this somehow okay so let's try that out so we'll go back here to let's close this by the way we don't need this so we'll go back here and let's find the uh, mouse click event or no key event the key press event there we go so on key press enter save go back here and we'll go back here and then now we need to create this method here so hover over this there we go. So yeah, whenever the key is pressed, we want to do poop dot set, and let's find something we want to do to it. Um, oh, I got a good one. Let's rotate it. So set the rotate. So poop dot set rotate, and let's get the current rotation. So poop dot get rotate plus one. So what it's going to do is every time you press a key on this um, anchor pane here, it's going to basically rotate the uh, choice box by one each time, okay? So it should slowly rotate over time as we press the key over and over and over, okay? So let's see if this works. So if we run this now, we can test it out. Okay, um, there we go. So now nothing's happening. So let's press the key now, boom. And you can see that it's starting to turn, right? So if you press it, it's starting to turn a little bit, but if you hold it, now it's gonna turn even faster, okay? So that is awesome. As you can see, that's pretty cool, pretty advanced. So now we've found a way to link our FXML back into the code so that we can control it and use the nodes how we usually know it. So now we're using FXML and code interchangeably, right? And we're using the controller now. So I taught you a lot this episode. Hopefully you um, are enjoying this. So yeah, that's all I'm gonna show you for this episode. I showed you how to make a controller for a FXML file, how to link it with a um, FXML file, and then um, how to set events for the FXML file and for the controller. And then finally how to make um, FX IDs for a object that you can use to manip manipulate a node within FXML and all that, okay? So anyway, if you have any questions about what I showed you today, you can ask in the comment section below. I'll be glad to help you. Or I would prefer that you join our Discord server. We have a Discord server with about 500 or 400 people where you can join, ask questions, get friends. If you don't have any, whatever you want to do, leave suggestions. So yeah, make sure you join. It's going to be really awesome. The link is in the description for you, okay? Also, all the code for today's episode is going to be in the description below. So if you forget how to do any of this with the controller or the ID or anything like that, the code will be there for you for reference, okay? And then finally, if you know support this channel, you can click the join button below this video. And then you can join this channel as a member for $1, $5, or $10 a month. And you can cancel at any time if you want to, okay? So if you do that, I'll be highly grateful. And um, if you don't do it, that's okay too. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And peace.